Well, my first guest, Judy, says that she had the perfect husband for the first 30 years of marriage. They shared date nights, vacations, weekends, camping, and trips to Disney World with their precious daughter. Judy says her husband was her soulmate and he was her best friend. And Danny agrees. He says, look, it was a true fairy tale marriage until last year when he says he turned into a complete monster. That's what he says. Now he's here to find out if the damage he's done to his relationship can ever be repaired. Take a look. My marriage was a wonderful marriage. Every marriage has its ups and downs. We didn't have very many downs. Judy and I had a picture perfect marriage. I believe we were made for each other. In my mind, I thought things started to change when his father passed away. Last year, when I turned 53, I felt like I was at the end of my life, and you just want to live every day like it's your last day. I didn't know what was going on with my husband. He started not coming home from work until later in the evening. I said, why would you not come home after you're working 12 hours? When I had the midlife crisis mindset, just breaking the normal routine was a sense of freedom for me, wanting to do what I wanted when I wanted to do it for as long as I wanted to do it. I would try my best to shake his being. I love you, why are you doing this? And it didn't rock it. I said, you're like an ice man. You're so cold and distant. Are you in there? And then he started getting angry. Just really didn't want anybody to question me for what I was doing or where I had been. Normal things in life would make me angry. Always had a lot of questions in my head swirling around like a tornado. He would always go downstairs and make coffee and donuts, and he would bring it up to me before he went to work. And he kissed me goodbye, I love you, baby, have a good day, and off he would go. That evening, he came home. He says, Judy, I want to tell you something. I want a divorce. I don't want to be the perfect husband. I just want to live a single life but everything's gonna be okay. And he laughed at me. I said, what is wrong with you? And that's when it started to fall apart. I did tell her I wanted a divorce, but I cannot remember anything about that day. It is a blur. There were no real signs. I just thought my husband was being challenged with mourning the death of his father. After I asked Judy for a divorce, I stayed five more months before I actually moved out. Danny had become very secretive. I hired a private investigator because I thought my husband was mentally ill. The private investigator told me that a woman had stayed the night at Danny's house. When Judy questioned me about the other woman, I did lie to her. He was furious. He was so upset, he pulled out of the driveway cussing me. Danny never cussed me. And that's when it really started going bad. Well, Judy says when she found out that Danny was having an affair, she raged in a way she never thought she was capable of. Judy came to the house, knocked on the door. I didn't let her come in because there was someone else there. I thought it was odd he wasn't answering the door, but his truck was there. I went into Danny's truck and retrieved his cell phone. I started reading all these text messages from the girl he was seeing. Love you, Tiger. Gonna be blonde tonight. I'm scared. You gonna hurt me? I was standing there reading these messages and Danny walked over to me and grabbed my arm and something in me just let loose. I just took my fist and beat my husband in his head. She did hit me quite a few times upside the head and in the face. I got back in the car and I left and went to a parking place and just cried and screamed. I called three people to let them know that if I go to jail, please come bail me out, because my husband will probably press charges against me. Okay, I know why he's here. You want to put this back together. Absolutely. No question about no, it. No you, question. Whatever it takes, you want to put this back whatever together. Whatever it takes. Uh, even though you blew it up. Yes. Okay, why are you here? I need help. I look at him and I, my heart loves him, but I'm so mad at him. I don't know if this can be fixed. Well, other than the day you whopped him up beside the head several times, have you told him how you feel? Absolutely, I have. Uh huh. Absolutely, I have told him. I've told him, you what know. What have you told him? I've told him, how could you do this? We have a beautiful family. You know, your actions destroyed everything that we have lived for. You know, the woman, just everything that he has done. And I'm thinking, how can the love of my life just throw me away like a piece of trash and not look back? He had no emotion. He was not sincere. He didn't love me. He was just so angry. So I don't know. I don't know if this is a marriage 
that can be repaired. So I'm here to ask you for some guidance, some teaching tools. Now, you wrote me an email at one point that was lengthy and thoughtful, and you had no question that you wanted to fix this. At that time, I had no question. Okay, at that I, time. I was still loving my husband, yes. Right. And, uh, and it, like I say, it was lengthy and thoughtful. I mean, you were very introspective. You, you talked about your feelings, what you wanted to do. Uh, we've heard from you as well. So why did you do this? What happened? Did you just wake up stupid one morning? What? <laughs> Uh, what pretty happened? much, yes. Because that, that, uh, that's how you describe it, right? You say, uh, I, I don't know. I just... This, it, this, that feeling and mindset consumed me fairly quickly. Um, and I had no idea what, what a, the definition of a midlife crisis was at that time. Well, what is that? What, you, you said you didn't know what midlife crisis was. Um, I, I still don't know what that means. I hear, you hear it a lot. You see it a lot. But mm -hmm. what, what is that? Uh, after the fact, after I'd read a lot of stuff she had put on the, on the computer, it, it's, def, it's, the, it's a life-changing event. It's like getting out of a routine or a schedule, uh, doing things you normally would not do, uh, things of that nature. And that just pretty much described me A to Z, the, the symptoms that I had. Well, we posted a poll on Facebook asking, do you believe that men can really have a midlife crisis? Almost 90% of you said yes, and 11% said no. So most people, and you would certainly vote yes. Yes. At that point, you just, you, you said you wanted to live every day like it was your last. That's the <clears> feeling <throat> that you get, yes. You, you felt a rush, like you had to, you had to do something today. Adrenaline, uh, even when you were tired, you still had adrenaline. That, that was one of the reasons for not coming home right after work. Uh, just didn't want to end the day. You had said there wasn't enough time in the day. Not enough time in the, the day. The days weren't long enough, you said. Right. Well, they were, but they were long enough to get a mistress, and yours were long enough to get a PI. Yes. So that, that did eventually come, yes. Right. Now, you left her a note. I, I have the note here, this note. Tell me about this note. At that point, I had begged my husband, threw myself at him trying to save the marriage. And I come home one day and there was this note that basically said to me, move on, move on with your life. Find a friend, find a boyfriend. Be happy, because I am. I'm moving on. Yeah. Well, I, I have the note. Um, it... It was interesting. I mean, you said, at one point, you said, quote, I'm moving on with my life. I don't need your permission. I will do the divorce with or without your he permission. He did say that. I suggest you move forward. Find a friend or whatever. Protect yourself and be careful. In other words, he was giving me, in his mind, he was giving me the right to move on in my life, to find either a partner in life, because he didn't want any parts of that <clears throat> anymore. Right. Um, did you have a girlfriend at that point? I don't, well, I'm not sure exactly the time that that letter was written. You did. Uh, it was on... I do remember writing it, but not... Four days after Valentine's Day. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. This year. I did. Yes. Four days after. That was probably the Valentine's beginning. Day. I know because I left him a Valentine's card on the counter telling well, him that I still loved him. Yeah, I did. So you remember that? I do. Um, he threw it away in the trash. He did. It was hard. I have every card that he's ever given me. 33 years worth. And he threw yours in the trash. He didn't want it. He wanted no parts of it. I didn't get any flowers or box of candy or a card because he always said in his cards, I love you, baby. You're my world. You know, so I didn't get that. That was just the beginning of the mess, the nightmare. Then he can't remember a lot of things that he did to me. That's what's so scary about this. He can't remember his temperaments. He can't remember how he treated me. You know, and that's what was scary, because I thought there was something mentally wrong with him. 
Maybe there is. Well, that's why I hired a private investigator. I thought the private investigator was going to tell me that my husband is mentally ill, that he's depressed, and all he's doing is going to work. I knew he was going to tell me that. Well, a lot of times we use doctors for that. Well, I had taken him. You know, it's funny you say that because when he asked me for a divorce, I told him he needed to get his testosterone levels checked. I just thought, you know, maybe he's dipping. You know, women dip. They go up and down and they dip. And I thought maybe Danny was dipping. I didn't know that a man could dip. <laughs> but he did. He was dipping. And I thought, well, we're going to find out. So I took him to his family part, you know, the family physician. Yes. And he, they did blood work. And that day I told the doctor, I said, there's something wrong with my husband. There's something wrong with him. He's dipping. Can't you help him? You know? And she said, well, his blood tests come back OK. Everything's OK. And that's when I told her that there was something terribly wrong with this man. Yeah. Because you don't stay married 31 years and live the beautiful life that we had. And all of a sudden, he's just ready to toss it in the trash and walk away from everything. His daughter, his grandchildren, me, his partner in life. This man worshipped the ground I walked on. He held my hand yes. 33 years. A night never went by that that man didn't kiss me when he went to bed. We went to bed at the same time. We took baths together every night. <laughs> you don't do that. We did. You know, how many people can say they take a bath with their husband every night? Probably, uh, <laughs> we probably had a connection. Certainly not my wife. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I haven't had a bath in 40 years. Take a, take a crane to get we, me uh, out of there. We probably had a connection a few couples have. Yeah. We, we had our connection, connection that we had, I, I don't know of too many people that have it. It's like, you know, they wonder if we're both sick. I don't know. Uh, and that, that comes to the point that I, I don't understand how it happened either. Well, Danny says his midlife crisis hit at age 53. And in an instant, he decided to end his 30-year-long, too-good-to-be-true marriage to Judy. Now, after 10 devastating months, Judy says... She just looked, she said, I got to start my life again. So she joined a dating website and met a man who she says she cannot stop thinking about. I decided after 10 months that I needed to move forward with my life. I knew that he was not coming back, that he didn't want me. I was sitting on my couch Sunday evening and I was on Match.com and I decided to join. Judy signed on to an online dating site and did tell me how many hits she got. The purpose behind that was to try and make me jealous. I met a gentleman on Match.com. We had a phone conversation and he did want to meet me. I walked up to him, embraced him, and I had not felt that way for a long time. It was a total instant attraction. My knees buckled when he grabbed me. This man changed everything. That first date was a wonderful week of my life. He took me away on vacation and we just enjoyed each other's company. I came over to the house. Judy had left me a note on the counter that she had met someone and had gone away for the weekend. Something woke up inside of him and he realized that his wife was no longer there. I did call her, crying to her on the phone, asking her to come back home to forgive me and telling her that I wanted her back in my life. When Danny found out that I was away with a man, he was going to drive to get me and make me come home. He was calling my family, he was calling me, and it got to the point where Lawrence told me to turn the phone off. I'm on vacation with another man because my husband threw me away like a piece of trash. He didn't want me anymore. Well, plot thickens. Um, so that was a big step for you to it go on a, a dating very, website. It was. Because like you said, 33 years together, 30 years of marriage, uh, then all of a sudden you're with a stranger. I had been waiting for 10 months, and it was to the point where I just could not do it anymore. I thought I had waited long enough. This man showed no emotion. He, he showed me that he wasn't going to come home. So when I decided to go on that website, and go on a date, which is something I had not hardly ever done in my life, because I'd been with Danny, it was something new and exciting. And this man, when I met this man, he was genuine. Mm. And I had, we met, and I, I actually, the day we met, that day, he threw his driver's license up on the table. He said, take a picture of this, send it to your mother, your brother, your sister, I'm taking you away. And I said, no, you're not. We went to dinner, had a really long dinner, 
That evening, he says, so you gonna go away with me? I said, yeah, what time are you picking me up? <laughs> and he took me away. We had a beautiful time and I immediate, immediately, this man just grabbed hold of my heart. I never wanted another man to touch me. I never wanted another man. I never wanted anybody else but Danny. Mm -hmm. You know, he's I, I all I wanted. I wasn't gone 10 months either. Well, it was, it was almost, it, it, it I was. I didn't move out until February. I know, but you yeah. asked for the but, divorce me, in September. I was emotionally not Listen, there. I'm, I'm gonna yeah. try to help you here, but okay. this ain't about the math, okay? <laughs> this is not about calendar math. Um, it sounded like 10 years to me. It might have been two months, but it was 10 months. Okay, was this the first man that you met when you went on the dating site? No, I met one other gentleman for lunch. We oh. had a, a, a lunch date and... Um, Didn't click? No, because it wasn't anything I was looking for. It wasn't, I wasn't looking for a husband or a lover or I was looking to get out of the house to find a friendship. What was, you know? what was the difference between the first guy you met for lunch and the second guy you went away with? Well, the second guy I went away with, when I met him, my legs buckled. I just, <laughs> he grabbed the hold of me. He grabbed the hold of me when I got out of the car at the racetrack and he just grabbed a hold of me and says, come on girl, we're gonna go in here and talk. And we spent the whole afternoon into the evening together. And, it, and it, I felt so safe. It, it, I just, it was a feeling I'd not had for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, your legs just don't buckle when you meet people. No. No, and I work around a lot of men, professional people. Yeah. So this is not anything that is normal. This was normal. the first buckle. Absolutely, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, in two ways? Yes. I mean, did, <laughs> Did you spend the weekend with him? I spent the week with him. The week? I did. Yeah. And Danny, he, um, when he found that letter, because I asked him to watch the house. Nobody knew that I was going anywhere except for my sister. And I left on a counter Lawrence's information on the counter in case I disappeared. Because you don't know when you go away with a man, you don't know if he's going to bring you back. Right. You left a, a, a note to him to keep an eye on the house? I did. You were going, did you tell him where you were going? No. Did you tell him you were going with a man? No. You said, I'm out of here. I said, I'm going to wait, I'm going to go away for a while. Please watch the house. I'll be back. I, I might have even put that I'll be back the following weekend or something. Yeah. And then on the other counter, I left all Lawrence's contact information, the color of his truck, his driver's license, <laughs> in case, you know, his, his website, you know, in case I disappeared. And I told my sister, I said, I'm going to go away. And I said, there's information on the counter if I don't come so back. So you just wanted, you, that wasn't some... really safety, but just, you just wanted to know who to electrocute if, right. if you didn't come back. Right, if I right. didn't come back home. Okay, right. who to catch and kill. Who to come look for. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, is it my understanding, um, you know, there's no country song that says, how can I miss you if you won't leave? Um, she left. She, did. she took up with another man. She did. And instantly, your midlife crisis was over. <laughs> Danny says when he found out Judy was on a weekend long date with another man, he suddenly, in his words, in an instant, wanted Judy back. Now here's an excerpt from a note that he wrote to her to try to get her back. He said, quote, my tornado has stopped. The trigger was you might be with someone else and that made me realize how much I love you. I am more in love with you now. I was never going to divorce you. That's why I never took any more furniture. I was just being an with my temper, but it is all gone. I will get you anything, rings, cars, or we can travel anywhere. I have made one mistake in 33 years. I think I deserve a second chance. We're humans, not machines. We can start with counseling again. And you texted Lawrence and told him to back off. Uh, at that very weekend, the, the same weekend she went away, I told him that, uh, yes, I did, the number was on the counter. I did text him and, and I asked him uh, to, as man to man, please back off. Let me, let me try and fix my marriage. We, we have a daughter, grandchildren. Did you know that he got a text? Yes, Lawrence told me that he had texted Danny and he wanted to know how Danny got the text number. Because if I did not give it to him, that he was, you know, he didn't really like that. But he, he did tell Danny that um, Danny is the one that brought the evil into the marriage. 
and that he wasn't going to walk away unless I told him to. Mm -hmm. He had no intentions of giving in to Danny. Um, so now you are completely clear on what you want to do. Absolutely. You, you want your marriage back together, your, your relationship back together, you want your wife back, you want to get back to this unreal life that you had before. I, yes, I am 10 times more appreciative of what I had or maybe still have than ever before. I, uh, I love this woman more now than ever. Uh, even after 33 years being together, my love is probably 10 times stronger. Uh, obviously, because I've, I've been waiting and putting, I mean, just, just waiting for her to maybe, I never know when the next day she might wake up and say, I want to fix things with my husband again. So I, I, I'm more appreciative of my life, my wife, my beautiful family. Yeah, but and, since you don't have any insight into why you just woke up and turned into a monster or whatever. No. Iceman. Uh, Iceman, monster, got stupid, uh, there, whatever my, we call my, it. My brother has a, has a version of it. He's, he's, a, he's a Christian man. He says maybe the devil's tried to divert you because of you, of you coming closer to Christ. And I, and I can't, he's my brother and I can't ignore what he's saying. Well, no, but I don't think the devil made me do it's going to get you. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that's what happened. That's his, that's his version no, of what and, he and thinks. I don't, and listen, I'm very much a Christian and I, I don't make light of, of any of that at all, but I also, y you know what foxhole Christians are, right? Yes. Yeah, foxhole Christians, are, it's like two guys in a foxhole and the shells are coming in. <laughs> he says, are you a Christian? His buddy says, well, I am tonight. There's no, athe uh, no atheist in a foxhole. Yeah, there, exactly. Yeah. But since you don't have insight into why this happened to begin with, how can she know that it's not going to happen again next month or next year? Because it seems, you know, it's kind of, and I don't mean to, this is not an insult to you, it's just, please, but it, you see this, if, if there's a dog in the backyard and they've got a toy or a bone over there, mm -hmm. it can lay there forever and the dog not have any interest into it. But you let another dog walk in that gate <laughs> and walk over to that toy or bone and you got you a dog fight going on. <laughs> Because the, the dog wasn't interested in the toy or the bone till another dog was, then all of a sudden he wants to repossess it. He wants to reown it. But then as soon as he does, then it loses its interest to him again. And that, she's got to be thinking here, okay, so he instantly wanted me back when somebody else showed an interest in me, but he sure didn't for months before that. So now well, he repossesses me, the other dog walks out of the yard, and then I'm just over there again. Like the forgotten toy. I understand her. That's got to be part of your her. concern because you're, you're saying, is. am I going to walk it away is. from Lawrence right. and back Why to Why would him? I give up a good thing and go back to something that almost destroyed me? Why would I give him that? Well, I'm going to answer that. Next, Judy says she can't choose between her husband, Danny, and her boyfriend, Lawrence. Danny, 33 years history. Lawrence buckled her knees. <laughs> she wants to make a decision and says, whatever I say goes. I don't want that responsibility, but I am going to give him some things to think about. Uh, a couple months ago, I moved back into our home. We decided to try and fix our marriage. Everything was like normal. During those four days, it was like a honeymoon again. We were intimate every day. And then uh, four days later, she said she wasn't ready to do it yet. As long as I have those visions in my head of that other woman, I can't fix this. She still angry for what I had done and also had feelings for another person. So I continued living there, sleeping in another bedroom. She would continue to see him. Bringing Danny back into the home has really impaired my relationship with Lawrence. I don't let Lawrence pick me up at my house. If I go away with Lawrence, I meet him somewhere. You have to be respectful. Well, comment on that. Uh, that's, that's very painful to, to stay at home and watch that happen. Um, but He's been I, tortured since I let him move back in to see that I'm still living my life one but, day at a time. But I have a, I have but a never... You say it's respectful to go meet it's, your boyfriend down the street. Well, I, it, the way I look at this is Danny dissolved my marriage vows. I have a marriage certificate. I don't have a marriage. He dissolved the vows that we took before God, and he dissolved them with his actions. So I don't have a marriage. I have a marriage certificate 
that holds me legally bound to him and all our assets together. But as for Lawrence coming and picking me up, I didn't want to disrespect Danny or hurt Danny. Danny is being tortured ever since he moved back into the house to see that Judy is up, functioning, living her life, and moving on one day at a time. Judy can't take a week at a time, but Judy can do one day at a time. And as for Lawrence, Lawrence is willing to accept one day at a time. You know, he knows that there might not be a tomorrow for him. He wants me to be happy, and he wants me to be in my happy place. Danny did not care if I had a happy place. And for him to want me back now, how do I trust that? I don't know how to trust that. But I'm like thinking like you were just saying. The dog didn't want the bone, and then the dog wants the bone now because another dog wanted the bone. You know. So. I knew you'd get it. I got it. I got, I got it. I but the thing it. is, Lawrence doesn't want to give up his bone now. He's not willing to do that. And neither does Danny. So, you know. Well, Judy says she's having a tough time choosing between her husband of 31 years and her new boyfriend of three months, a man who Judy says is like a drug to her. When I'm with Lawrence on the weekends, I'm in my happy place. And then as time goes by and I have to get ready to go back home, I have to go back to reality. And I have to fight again with my emotions. Danny is the Danny that I have known for 33 years. Do I trust him? Absolutely not. And that's what I'm having a hard time with here. How do you trust someone that walked in one afternoon and just walked away from it all and then wants to come back like nothing has happened here? Lawrence makes me happy. I had the opportunity to stay with Lawrence. I would stay with Lawrence. But the reality of it is, Danny and I have our assets, we have our family, and there's a lot to be worked out. And I don't know if I'm strong enough to go through all that. Lawrence wants me to be happy. He thinks I need a break from everything. And he offered me to come be with him and he would pay me my salary for three months, take a mental vacation from everything. I'm in this situation now where I have my husband pulling on me, wanting me to come back to him. And then I have Lawrence on the other hand that wants to spend the rest of his life with me. I can't decide which way to go because either way I go, somebody's going to be hurt and nobody needs to be hurt. Okay, now look, here, here's where we are on, on this. Um, this, do you count your history with him of 30 years and your family and all the things that you talked about treasuring so much? Does that have a value? Does that have a valence? Does that have a weight to you? Absolutely, it does. I love my husband. You, you love your husband. I've always loved my husband. And you've got a history with your husband. I do. But then on the other hand, there's Lawrence, and it's fresh, and it's exciting. It is. And it makes you feel valued and wanted and, and kind of re-energized your self-worth which had been seriously damaged. That's correct. But there's a big difference between falling in love and being in love. Falling in love is it's like skydiving. You're fa it's fun, it's exciting, it's exhilarating. Being in love is like landing and not killing yourself. I mean, there's, <laughs> there, there's a difference between the two. Yeah, but I didn't plan to fall in love with him. No, I wasn't I'm not saying. He pushed you out of the plane, I get that. Yeah. But yeah, he, You know, he... He's telling me that he's never loved, he's 57 years old, and he's never loved a woman the way he's loved me. But I'm at the point where now, you know, I don't know if I want to be married ever again. The odds are against you here, you and Lawrence. I mean, I'm not saying he's not fun to go to the lake with. Right. Lake Lawrence is right. probably <laughs> a lot of fun. But at home, Lawrence, She's mentioned his flaws already. All of that. Well, I mean, a woman is a piece of glass, you know, and you got to remember, you got to keep those edges polished. You have to, you know, you just, you got to take have. care of her. You, you have Absolutely. to, you know, make her feel like a woman. Lawrence Absolutely. said that. He, no, I told him. Oh, you told him. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the thing is, right now, when you look at at your husband, you see this other woman. I do. I when you see look her. at Lawrence, you, you see Lawrence. I see Lawrence. At the lake, hair blowing yep. in the wind. Yeah, he's handsome. All that, right? <laughs> look at him, he is handsome. Yeah, yeah he's 57 uh, years old. Yeah, he's, he's, he's handsome, I'm sure Danny I mean, he's, he's provided, he's, he's, uh, he's offered me a life, a life that 
I never wanted. As the boy got some money, it means well, he, he can he can provide me financial security. It, no he, I mean, he wants me to be happy. What you know is what Lawrence has told you. Lawrence, Lawrence, from the beginning, took me to meet his very closest friends because he wanted me to know who he was. Right. And he has. Well, that's helpful. He has. I mean, and but he was upset because I kept him in the closet. I wouldn't bring him around my family. But my daughter is not going to allow another man to be in her children's life as yeah. Mimi or Pap. No. And that's it weighing is. heavy on me. It is. It is weighing heavy on me. You know, well, all that. All right. I, it's time for me to tell you what I think. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? No. <laughs> I just, I, I, she, she, she was there for me when I mentally, she was there for me during my mental separation from her. And now I, I am there for her. I am her husband. And, uh, and I'm just going to be, be there for her. I have an unconditional love for this woman. She's doing what she feels like she's, is, 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 has the right to do right now. And is it painful? Yes, absolutely. But I cannot give up on this woman. Yeah. You a hound dog? Um, what's the definition of that? Well, you skirt chaser? <laughs> I mean, Abs you, absolutely you're going not. after another woman sometime? I mean, absolutely these are the not. things that she has to weigh in her mind. I understand that. He wouldn't even look at women because he knows I'd bop them upside the head. That's disrespectful. I have, I that have is tried to Which you've done. Well, only in a, a moment of rage, I lost myself when I found out that he was with that woman and all those nasty text messages. And you and boxed his ears. I busted him up pretty good. I, I didn't think I could ever do that. I've tried Dr. to be the Phil, best. Dr. Phil, he took me to a place I never want to go again. Okay, well. A woman doesn't act like that. No. Would y'all like to hear what I think about this? I do. That's why I'm here. You know I have to go to court Monday. That's why we're here. <laughs> so we're down to the wire here. We are. I have to fly back to West Virginia today, and I have to contact my attorney by Friday. You have unfinished emotional business with him. I do. You are still hugely pissed. I'm hugely pissed, and I'm, uh, you know, Dr. Phil, here's the thing. I've loved this man with all my heart. Sexually attracted to him after 33 years, can't get enough. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I I'm get sorry. It. I get it. Look, here's the thing. Lawrence, charming, fun, high risk guy, though, right? You recognize the high right. risk? I'm right. telling you, high risk. Okay, here you have unfinished emotional business. And I always tell people there is a time to get a divorce. And you know when that time is. The time is when you can walk out that door and say, I have turned over every stone. I have investigated every possible avenue of rehabilitation. I have no unfinished emotional business with this person. If you walk out mad, sad, glad, you know, whatever, in, in some emotional deflected area, then you're not ready to get a divorce. If you want to be happy and at peace this time next year, then you will make the investment of doing what I'm going to ask you to do. Give me 90 days to arrange some very specialized help for the two of y'all to work through where you are right now. If Lawrence is for real, he will step back and respect that, and he'll be standing there on the 91st day. If you go with Lawrence right now, you will spend the rest of your life wondering what it is that caused you to walk away from a 30-year family. Your daughter, the grandchildren, right. that, all of the things that, that y'all created together. And I, I, it's going to have to involve forgiving him. That doesn't mean you will forget it, but you will have to forgive it. And forgiving is a choice. It's not, right. it's not a feeling that comes over you one day, right. like a midlife crisis. <laughs> It's something that you choose to do, you choose to own, and it really has nothing to do with him. It has to do with you saying, right. you know, let God judge that, but I'm not going to be held in that emotional bond for the rest of my life I'm tormented, of Dale. bitterness. You've got to be willing to let that go. And you, there may be some things, you, you may need a pound of flesh before you do that. There may be some things you need to work out. And I will arrange some very, just as our gift to y'all, I will arrange Thank some you. very specialized help to do this. Give me 90 days, or if, you, or if it's 60 days, whatever the intensity is, 
but I need a period of time for you to finish this business and then look at him where you don't see that other woman. You see the man that you spent 33 years with that got dinner ready for you so you could watch me. <laughs> okay? If I arrange this for you, and I mean, I will start it right now. I mean, by the time y'all get back, where well, you're in the air, this will be getting worked on for, for you to get this okay. help and move forward. Will you give us that I time? Do. Now, there's a kicker. No Lawrence during that time. Okay. No Lawrence during that time. You got to right say. Right now, starting right now. You can't. You can talk to him. You can talk to him and tell him what you're going to do okay. and ask him to respect that period. But you can't. You never solve problems in a marriage by turning away from your partner, and, and you never s solve them by bringing in a third party. Okay. Okay. So will you do that? I will. I will. Fair enough? I will. Thank you. Okay, fair enough? Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.